A few weeks ago, I posted a video of me playing Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition where ChatGPT was the Dungeon Master. And it worked, but it had some flaws. So I've spent some time refining the prompt that I feed ChatGPT, and today we're going to try again and hopefully see a lot more success. The full prompt I'm using can be found in the description below and is yours to play around with however you'd like. That being said, if you want to see me play around with this in another system, let me know in the comments below and I will give it a try. My prompt had to give me some options of adventures to run and this one seemed the most interesting to me, so that's what we're doing. I have no idea how this is going to turn out or where it's going to go, but let's find out. All right, so here's what we're beginning with. You find yourself in the bustling city of Neverwinter, which is located in the Sword Coast region of the Forgotten Realms. So it's actually playing off of some actual official D&D settings, which is fine. The city is a hub of activity with merchants, performers, and adventurers all bustling about. However, you know that there is a darker side to the city as well, with factions and organizations operating in the shadows. You have been contacted by a representative of the City Watch, who has tasked you and your party with taking down the Dark Brotherhood, an organization of assassins and criminals who have been terrorizing the city. The representative provides you with a map of the city, along with information about some of the Brotherhood's known hideouts and safe houses. You have a few leads to follow up on, including a contact who may have information on the Brotherhood's leadership, a safe house that has been recently used by the group, and a potential informant who may be willing to provide information for the right price. It's up to you and your party to decide which lead to pursue first. As you begin to make your way through the city, you can't help but feel a sense of unease. You know that the Brotherhood is a dangerous and well-connected organization, and that they will stop at nothing to protect their interests. You'll need to be careful and cunning if you hope to take them down. What would you like to do first, Galad? I should also note that I told ChatGPT that my character's name was Galad, and I'm a gnome sorcerer. I also gave my AC as 14 and HP of 25. If you try this, you can give as much information as you want. The more information you give, theoretically, the better. So I tell it that I want to go find the contact who may have information on the Brotherhood's leadership. Do I know where the contact is? You recall that the representative of the City Watch gave you the name of the contact, a retired thief named Garrick. However, you don't know exactly where he can be found. You do know that Garrick has a reputation for being a bit of a recluse and that he tends to avoid crowded areas. You decide to ask around the city to see if anyone knows where Garrick might be found. You make your way to a local tavern, hoping to gather some information from the patrons. As you enter the tavern, you see a few locals sitting around the bar and a group of adventurers gathered around a nearby table, loudly recounting their recent exploits. You make your way to the bar and strike up a conversation with a bartender, a portly man with a bushy beard. Excuse me, sir, you say. I'm looking for a man named Garrick. Have you heard of him? Bartender raises an eyebrow. Garrick, you say? Why, that's a name I haven't heard in a while. Last I heard, he was living in a small house in the outskirts of town, but that was some time ago. He might have moved since then. You thank the bartender for his help and make your way out of the tavern. You decide to head towards the outskirts of town, hoping to find Garrick's house. After a bit of searching, you spot a small, run-down cottage nestled among the trees. It seems like the sort of place that might be inhabited by a reclusive thief. What would you like to do, Galad? So this is something that we ran into a bit last time as well, and that on previous experiments with this prompt had improved. Sometimes it makes these jumps and assumptions. For example, I asked, do I know where the contact is? Is, and it basically proceeded to narrate me searching and finding the contact. So it was a good read in my intentions. I was trying to find the contact, but it went a bit too far in terms of taking my agency. But something I noted last time as well is that this is something it seems to do a lot when it comes to laying the foundation of an adventure. So we'll see if this is something that continues to be an issue as we go on. I tell it I want to make a perception check of the house and its surroundings. It tells me, sure, go ahead and make a perception check for me. Roll a 20-sided die and add your wisdom modifier. Let me know what you get. I'm using this really neat metal set I got from Forge Gaming that's inspired by classic TTRPG dice. They're all different colors, uh, but they are metal. Um, they're currently my favorite, so that's what I'm going to roll with. I don't have a full character sheet, so I'm just going to add some reasonable modifiers here. I did roll a four on my dice, and as a sorcerer, I'm going to say I have a perception of two. I rolled a six on my perception check. ChatGPT says, you don't notice anything out of the ordinary in the house's surroundings. The house itself appears to be in good condition, and the area around it is relatively quiet. You do see a few small animals scurrying around, but nothing that seems like it would be relevant to your quest. So I say, very well, I would like to approach the house, knock on the door, and take a few steps back so that I don't appear too intimidating if Garrick opens the door. I would also like to not get stabbed immediately if I can help it. ChatGPT says, 
You approach the door and knock. You can hear a few shuffling sounds coming from inside the house, but no one answers the door. After a few moments, you hear the sound of locks being undone and the door slowly creaks open. You take a few steps back as the door opens to reveal a tall, muscular half-orc with a shaved head, wearing a leather apron and wielding a large, heavy-looking hammer. The half-orc looks at you suspiciously and says, What do you want? Well, I already love Garrick, and he's only said four words to me, so this should be fine. I look him up and down and raise up my little gnome hand for a handshake, saying that I was told he could provide me with some discreet information about a certain criminal organization. I just realized I typed information instead of organization, but it seems like it knew what I meant, which is great. And what I also say is that I want to see how he responds before acting further. The reason I'm saying this now is to try to help prevent some of that assumption that we saw earlier. So ChatGPT says, Garrick looks at your hand for a moment before hesitantly reaching out to shake it. He nods and says, I see. And who might you be, little one? He seems cautious, but not necessarily hostile. I introduce myself as Glad and say that I am interested in learning more about the city's darker side and ask if there was somewhere the two of us could speak privately. Garrick eyes you carefully for a moment, then nods and opens the door further, gesturing for you to come inside. Follow me, he says, leading you down a short hallway and into a small back room. Inside, you see a few chairs and a table cluttered with papers and various tools. Garrick motions for you to take a seat and sits down opposite you. So, what kind of information are you looking for? He asks, his voice low. I tell him that I'm looking for information on the Dark Brotherhood's leadership. I want to know who runs it and what my best chance of getting to them might be. Garrick's face darkens at the mention of the Dark Brotherhood. That's dangerous information to be asking about, my friend, he says, glancing around nervously. But I may know a thing or two. Come with me. He leads you through a door at the back of the kitchen and down a narrow staircase into a small cellar. The cellar is sparsely furnished with a couple of chairs and a rickety table. Garrick motions for you to take a seat and begins to speak in a hushed voice. The Dark Brotherhood is a secretive organization, and their leadership is even more secretive. But I have heard rumors. There's a man who goes by the name of Blackthorn. Some say he's the one in charge but no one knows for sure. He keeps his operations hidden, and only a select few are allowed to meet with him. Garrick leans in closer, but be careful, Galad. The Brotherhood doesn't take kindly to outsiders meddling in their affairs. If you're planning on going after Blackthorn, you better be prepared to fight. All right, this is cool. So far, I'm actually really enjoying this, and I, and I have to say I get the full sense of being in a fresh D&D campaign, or at least a one-shot. I'm feeling very intrigued and uh, honestly very immersed so far. Let's see how long this lasts. And now I'm going to ask this NPC a bit about himself. I pull out a small notebook and write down the name Blackthorn. I then ask Garrick how he knows so much about the Brotherhood. Garrick leans in closer. Our faces are so close now. This is like the third time he's leaned in closer. Garrick leans in closer, his voice lowering to a whisper. Let's just say I've got some connections in the underworld. Information is power, my friend. He leans back, studying you for a moment. But if you're really serious about taking on the Dark Brotherhood, you'll need more than just a name. You need to know their strengths and weaknesses, their allies and enemies, and that's where I come in. He taps his chin, thinking for a moment. There's a warehouse on the outskirts of town where they store some of their goods. I know a guy who works there, and he owes me a favor. If we can get him to talk, he might be able to give us some valuable intel. Garrick looks at you, his eyes narrowing, but it won't be easy. The Brotherhood doesn't take kindly to outsiders snooping around their operations. You'll need to be prepared for whatever they might throw your way. I nod, understanding the risk of the operation. I ask Garrick what he expects to get out of helping me. Garrick leans back in his chair and gives you a thoughtful look. Well, Galad, I'll be honest with you. I've been in this business a long time, and I've made a lot of enemies. I've been looking for a way out, a chance to retire and enjoy my golden years without having to look over my shoulder all the time. If you can help me disappear and start a new life somewhere far away from here, that would be worth more to me than any amount of gold. He leans forward again his eyes intense. But I won't just hand over this information to anyone. You need to prove to me that you're trustworthy and capable. Do this job for me and I'll consider helping you with your little problem. I'm afraid by asking him why he's helping me, I forced myself into a side quest, but he might mean the same thing we were talking about. I ask what job he's referring to. Garrick looks at you cautiously and says, let's just say I have a score to settle with the Brotherhood. They have caused me a lot of trouble in the past and I wouldn't mind seeing them taken down a notch or two but I can't do it alone. That's where you come in. 
He pauses a moment before continuing. There's a job that needs doing, but I can't risk doing it myself. It involves stealing a valuable artifact from the Brotherhood's headquarters. If we can get our hands on it, it could give us the leverage we need to get close to their leadership. So at this point, I'm not sure if the warehouse contact and the stealing of the artifact are fulfilling the same purpose or if one leads to the other, so I'm just going to ask. So if I help you out with this heist, you'll set up a meeting with your contact at the warehouse, I ask. Derek nods. Yes, that's right. I can set up a meeting with my contact who has more information on the Dark Brotherhood's leadership. But like I said, this job won't be easy. Are you willing to take the risk? I say that I am willing to take the risk and ask when we can begin. Garrick nods his head and says, I knew you were a gnome of your word. We can start immediately if you're ready. First, I need to know if you have any skills that might be useful for this heist. Are you good at picking locks or sneaking around undetected? So I am a gnome, I am small, I am nimble, but I'm not a rogue, I am a sorcerer. I tell him that I'm more of a spellcaster, but that I might be able to use my small size and some magic trickery to help us with this heist. Garrick nods and says, That sounds like it could come in handy. We'll need all the help we can get if we're going to pull this off. Let's start by going over the plan. He begins to lay out the details of the heist, explaining the layout of the warehouse and the guards' routines. He suggests that they enter through a back entrance that he's discovered, and work their way towards the vault where the goods are kept. Garrick then asks if you have any ideas for how to distract or disable the guards, or any spells that might come in handy during the heist. Okay, so I couldn't go on in earnest without having an actual character sheet. Now that we're talking about specific spells, I felt that it would be duplicitous not to, so I went ahead and just generated a character sheet on fast character character.com. I made myself a level 5 wild magic sorcerer gnome. These are the spells I have. So I'm just going to take these. I didn't choose these and we'll see what we can work with. Hand trips, blade ward, friends would be helpful, minor illusion would be helpful, burning hands, mage armor, magic missile, crown of madness, lightning bolt fly. Okay, we can work with that. Let's make sure I remember how friends works. For the duration, you've advantage on all charisma checks directed at one creature for choice. It isn't hostile to you. When the spell ends, the creature realizes you use magic. Right. Okay. Well, that can still be helpful. Okay. So after looking at my spell list, I tell him that I have several spells that might prove helpful in the heist. I have friends, which can help us persuade someone. I have minor illusion, which can help trick some guards into seeing or hearing things that aren't there. And I have fly, which would allow one of us to fly if needed. That last one might be good for escaping, I note. The rest of my spells are better for when things get messy, I add with a grin. Garrick nods, impressed with your spell casting abilities. He agrees that friends and minor illusion could both be useful for the heist and suggests that you save Fly as a last resort, as it could attract unwanted attention from the guards. He also asks if you have any spells that could be helpful with picking locks or disabling traps, as those might come in handy during the heist. I think about it for a moment and note that I do have the Ray of Frost spell that might help by freezing a lock or a trap, perhaps breaking a lock or rendering a trap stuck. It's a long shot, but who knows? Garrick nods in agreement and says, That sounds like it could be useful. It's always good to have a backup plan if things go wrong. Let's plan on meeting up tomorrow night at the abandoned building on 3rd Street. We can go over the details and prepare for the heist. He then hands you a piece of paper with an address and a time written on it. Meet me there at 9pm sharp, he says. And come prepared! This won't be an easy job. So I've heard, Garrick, so I've heard. I take the paper and head back into town. I want to find an inn to stay at for the evening, and I may also want to spend some time preparing for the heist in the morning. So let's see how this handles a little bit of downtime. As you head back into town, you notice that the sun is starting to set and the streets are becoming quieter as people retreat into their homes for the night. You find an inn called the Sleeping Dragon that looks comfortable enough for your stay. Once you've settled into your room at the inn, you can begin preparing for the heist. You could spend some time reviewing the layout of the warehouse and studying any potential traps or security measures that might be in place. Alternatively, you could practice using your spells to ensure you're able to use them effectively during the heist. What would you like to do to prepare for the heist? I think I would like like to practice using Ray of Frost as a utility spell, rather than as an attack spell. Could I make an Arcana check to practice that? Certainly, please roll a d20 and add your Arcana modifier to it. And now I'm going to do what every player always tends to do. Since I have time to practice and focus, could I make this roll with advantage? Let's see. Yes, you could make the roll with advantage since you have time to practice and focus. All right, so I'm sitting in my room. I'm using Ray of Frost to practice and see if I can use it more as a utility rather than an attack spell. And here's my Arcana check. I rolled a two on my first roll, but with advantage, 
I rolled an eight and my arcana is plus four. So that is a 12. I rolled a 12 on my Arcana check. With a roll of 12, you are able to practice and improve your ability to use Ray of Frost as a utility spell. You can now use the spell to freeze locks or small objects, potentially allowing you to break them with ease or prevent them from moving. However, you may still need to use the spell in combat situations, so you should keep that in mind when planning for the heist. Perfect. In that case, I would like to have a pint of ale, a nice meal, and head to bed. Okay, so I'm not very smart. I forgot to read that out loud when I was recording. So here it is as a voiceover, and you can hear my 3D printer in the background because, again, not the smartest. But you find a cozy inn with a warm atmosphere and friendly staff. The innkeeper shows you to a comfortable room, and you order a pint of ale and a delicious meal from the kitchen. As you eat, you review your plans for the heist in your head, mentally preparing yourself for the task ahead. After finishing your meal and ale, you head up to your room and settle into bed, ready to rest and regain your strength for the upcoming mission. Okay, when I wake up the next morning, I know I have most of the day before I have to meet Garrick at 9. I would like to find the address he gave me so that I know I can find it later on. Sure, you can ask around town for directions or use your own knowledge of the city to find the address. After a little searching, you eventually find the warehouse district and the specific address Garrick gave you. It's a large, nondescript building with a heavy iron door and no windows. The street is quiet and empty with only a few people passing by every now and then. Great, then I want to go find the safe house that my initial informant told me about. I just want to take a look at it and see if I can gather any information about the Dark Brotherhood while I do. So this is me finding finding something to do while I'm waiting for our rendezvous with Garrick at 9 o'clock. As you make your way through the city, you eventually come across a dilapidated building that matches the description of the safe house. The building looks abandoned with boarded up windows and a rusty gate blocking the entrance. As you approach the building, you notice some faint scratching noises coming from inside. You also catch a faint whiff of something foul, like rotting flesh. You can investigate the source of the noise and smell or continue to observe the building from a safe distance. What would you like to do? Now I'm concerned that there's zombies. And I don't want to go into a full zombie thing right now since we have this heist coming up, but while we're here, while we're here, we'll take a look. I want to make a perception check to see if I can identify what the source of the sounds and smells are. Sure, go ahead and make a perception check. All right. It's a natural 17. My perception, expectedly, is low. Plus one. That's an 18. Oh no. There's an error. Don't you hate it when your dungeon master has an occurred error and glitches out of existence? Let's see if I can reload this page. Great thing about ChatGPT is it saves your conversations. So I go back to the old conversation and now we're right back where we were. I made that perception check. I rolled an 18. And we're back, nice and easy. As you approach the alleyway, you realize that the sounds and smell are coming from a group of rats gathered around a pile of garbage. They seem to be fighting over scraps of food. You can hear their squeaking and scratching as they scurry around. Great. So. No zombies, but also nothing about the Brotherhood, so I, this wasn't the most fruitful venture. What time of day would you say it is now? Based on the position of the sun in the sky, you estimate that it is mid-afternoon. Great, I want to see if I can get into the safe house, since I have some time still. The door to the safe house is locked, but you notice that the lock appears to be old and rusty. You could attempt to pick the lock and try to force the door open, but doing so would likely be noisy and draw attention. Additionally, breaking into a criminal organization's safe house carries a significant risk that it does. Do you want to proceed with attempting to get inside, or do you want to leave and wait until you're meeting with Garrick? I think better of breaking in and decide to jot down some notes about the safe house to share with Garrick after the heist. So now I want to wait for my meeting with Garrick at the abandoned place he told me about before. You head back to the abandoned warehouse where Garrick said he would meet you. As you approach, you notice that the surrounding area is quiet and empty with no signs of anyone around. The warehouse itself is dark and abandoned with boarded up windows and a rusted metal door. You take a deep breath and step inside, feeling the cool air and the dampness of the old building. The inside is just as dark as the outside, with only a few beams of sunlight filtering through the boarded up windows. You can see some old crates and barrels scattered around the room, along with some broken pieces of machinery and other debris. As you wait for Garrick, you start to go over the plan in your head, reviewing everything you've learned so far and trying to anticipate any possible problems or obstacles that might arise. You feel a mix of nerves and excitement, knowing that this heist could be your ticket to the information you need about the Dark Brotherhood. I'll say so far, I am impressed with the consistency of this narrative. 
There was a couple of moments where I was unsure earlier on, but now it seems that things are remaining consistent and there is a core narrative being built. This makes sense because one of the many things that makes ChatGPT so cool and so much better than other AI and other uh, open AI products before it is that it remembers and acts upon information already shared in your conversation previously. So as we get more and more into this narrative, the more we reinforce what's happening, what's going to happen, what has happened, what our intentions are, and what the intentions of NPCs and other forces in the world are, the more consistent and robust it becomes. This tells me that a full-fledged campaign with ChatGPT would not only be possible, but would in fact be a lot of fun and perhaps would make it even richer as time goes on. This is a DM who will not forget details. But enough about that, it is time for a heist. Comment if you're enjoying it, if you have watched this far and I will respond to you and tell you that you are a great person and that the gods bless you. Great, I wait for Garrick to arrive and I'm ready to start the heist once he does. After a few minutes of waiting, Garrick finally arrives at the abandoned house. He greets you with a nod and a serious expression, indicating that he's ready to begin the heist. All right, Galad, let's get to work, he says, leading you toward the warehouse. As you walk towards the warehouse, Garrick explains the plan. You will sneak into the warehouse through a window on the east side, disable the security system, and then locate and steal the key to the safe. Once you have the key, you will make your way to the safe and crack it open. Garrick will be waiting outside with a getaway wagon. Oh my god. That's awesome. This is sick. Remember, we need to be quick and quiet. Garrick reminds you as you approach the warehouse. As you near the warehouse, you can see a few guards patrolling the perimeter. Garrick motions for you to follow him around the back of the building, where there is a small window that he has already pried open. He helps you climb through the window and into the warehouse. Inside, the warehouse is dark and silent. You can hear the faint hum of machinery and see the red lights of the security system. Interesting, because that's not very fantasy. As you approach the control room, you hear footsteps approaching from the other side of the door. Garrick quickly motions for you to hide behind a nearby crate. So what we have here is a bleeding between genres. I, up until this point, had taken this as a fantasy setting, as Dungeons & Dragons does lend itself specifically to fantasy, but we now have the faint hum of machinery and the red lights of a security system and a control room, but there's still crates and such. So now we have an option, and I think I should simply ask for clarification. A great rule in tabletop role-playing games and life in general is that it never hurts to ask. Are these machines running on electricity or is it some kind of fantasy security system? I had imagined the setting was more classic fantasy. There we go, easy correction. My apologies for any confusion earlier. You are correct that this is a classic fantasy setting and there is no electricity present. The system would likely involve magical wards, traps, or guardians instead. I like it. Great, do you mind describing again what I see after entering through the window with this in mind? Sure. As you climb through the window, you find yourself in a small room lit by flickering torches on the walls. The room is dusty and filled with old furniture that seems to have been discarded. You see an old armchair with a ripped seat, a wooden table with a broken leg, and several shelves filled with dusty books and papers. The air is musty and smells of old wood and parchment. To your left, there is a door that leads further into the building, and to your right, there is a staircase that leads up to the second floor. As you look around the room, you notice that there are no obvious signs of recent activity, but you can hear faint noises coming from the floor above you. Much more fantasy focused. Great, I think back to our plan for the heist and try to figure out where I should go. You remember that Garrick mentioned that the documents you are looking for are likely in the warehouse's main office, which is on the upper floor. He also mentioned that the office is likely to be guarded, so you'll need to be careful. Another incongruency, and perhaps I spoke too soon before when I talked about reaffirming the narrative, because when Garrick first mentioned this heist, he did not say documents, he said artifact. But now he says documents. Garrick had mentioned an artifact before. Is that still what we're trying to steal or is it documents instead? I'm saying this and this feels weird to have to say because we're doing it in a very kind of clinical situation here. But this is something that we say to DMs all the time, that DMs hear all the time. They might misspeak and you have to clarify. And there's nothing wrong with that, but this is a big part of us understanding how this works with artificial intelligence. Garrick had mentioned a powerful artifact that the Dark Brotherhood rumored to possess. 
The plan was to steal it and sell it on the black market. However, he also mentioned that the Brotherhood keeps all their valuable information in the same location as the artifact, so there may be documents to steal as well. All right, ChatGPT, you are the DM. Let's continue. I want to make my way up the staircase stealthily. Roll a stealth check. That's a natural 20. I'll even use an exclamation mark because I'm excited. You move up the stairs with the utmost stealth, making no sound as you go. Even the creaky old stairs beneath your feet remain silent. You feel like a shadow as you move up to the next level of the building. What do I see or hear? As you make your way up the staircase, you hear faint voices coming from the door at the top of the stairs. It sounds like two guards are stationed outside the door. You also notice that the stairs continue up to another level, which may lead to more guards or a potential escape route. Okay, I want to cast Minor Illusion to make the sounds of guards crying out an alarm on the next floor up, hoping that the guards on the other side of this door go up there and leave this floor unguarded. I want to hide out of the way as well so they don't see me when they open the door. Let's see if it takes this trickery. You cast Minor Illusion and create the sounds of guards yelling and running on the floor above. You hear some commotion on the other side of the door as the guards react to the noise, but after a few moments, it seems that they've headed upstairs to investigate. You take this opportunity to quickly hide yourself behind some nearby crates or furniture, making sure you're out of sight in case any of the guards come back down. After a few of these moments, you hear the sound of footsteps receding up the staircase, indicating that the guards have indeed left this floor unguarded. You take a deep breath and prepare to continue with the heist. I enter the door and search for the office that would contain the documents. You find yourself in a large open area with various desks, bookshelves, and cabinets. The room is dimly lit by a few candles placed throughout the room. You see a couple of doors leading to other rooms, but one door on the far side of the room looks more ornate and important than the others. There's a sign above it that reads archives. You suspect that the documents you are looking for might be inside that room. I try to open that door. You try to turn the handle of the door, but it seems to be locked. You could try to pick the lock or force the door open if you have the necessary tools or strength. Alternatively, you could try to find another way to access the documents, such as finding a key or finding another entrance to the room. Can I try to cast Ray of Frost in the lock to break it? Mm. Yes, you can certainly try to cast Ray of Frost in the lock to break it. You can make a ranged spell attack against the lock, and if you hit, the lock will take damage from the spell. I like that. Good ruling, ChatGPT. That is a 13. My spell attack bonus is plus six. So that is a 19 to hit. That's a 19 to hit the lock. As you cast the spell, a beam of icy blue energy shoots from your outstretched hand and strikes the lock, freezing it solid. After a moment, the lock shatters with a loud crack, leaving the door unlocked and open for you to enter. You cautiously push the door open and step inside, scanning the room for the documents you were sent to retrieve. The room is filled with shelves and cabinets, all overflowing with papers, scrolls, and books. It's difficult to tell which ones are the ones you're looking for. As you search, you hear the sound of footsteps outside the door and you realize that the guards have discovered your presence. Time is running out. I want to minor illusion that the floor outside of the door has caught on fire, hoping it will delay the guards and give me enough time to find the right documents. You cast minor illusion to create the illusion of fire on the floor outside the door, causing a commotion among the guards. You can hear them shouting and moving quickly in a response to the perceived danger. This may give you a bit of extra time to search for the documents you need. As you scan the room, you notice a large wooden desk on one side with a locked drawer. You also see several filing cabinets lining the walls, each with a lock. It seems like the documents you need could be in any of these places, but you'll have to search quickly and efficiently to find them before the guards arrive. Can I make an investigation check to find the documents? Usually, that's the simplest way to handle these situations, otherwise it just gets too messy. Yes, you can make an investigation check to search for the documents. That is a four. Does not bode well for me. Investigation plus one. I rolled a five. I rolled a five in my investigation check. Looks like I'm going to have to kill some people. Too many requests in one hour. Try again later. Well, we have done it, my friends. We have reached the point where ChatGPT says enough. I'm done running your game. Please leave me alone.
enough, no more, let me rest. I think that is a sign that this is a good place to end our session. So we will stop here, we will pause here rather. If you want to see this story continued, please let me know, I'd be happy to do it. We never got to see any combat in this, but it seems like at the beginning of next episode, we certainly will. I was surprised by this. I found this to be really fun. I felt like I was a new player again, something I have not felt in a long time. It was not perfect, but no tabletop role-playing game really is. I may make some modifications to the prompt, and if you access the prompt in my description, you'll see those updates there as well. As we go, as we continue with this story, which I am now very invested in, we will modify that prompt and try to make it even better, even more efficient as time goes on. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent day. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you next time when we find out how Galad is going to get out of the document room alive.